Hi, my name is Stephen McGee, and I'm the author of Toxic Electricity. I'm here to look into my Diffenbachia, or Dumcane, plant experiments. I have many of these plants right now. This is what they typically look like when they come into my home. This particular experiment actually has this plant growing inside a Faraday cage. And this has yet to deform. It's only been running for about a week. So, over here we have my stray voltage experiment. And if we look at the pot, we actually have a grounding cable running into the pot. And this pot is actually electrically grounded to the electrical system. And this experiment has not run long enough to come to any conclusions, but one of the things that you will notice is that this is pretty typical of what the leaves look like when they come into the home. The new growth coming up is losing its patterning and is somewhat deformed, it's not symmetrical. So down here we have the smoke detector experiment that I've been running. And while they look okay, what the conclusion is right now of the smoke detector experiment is that the growth cycles on these plants have been severely retarded. This experiment was started back in, in March and it, the plants look healthy but it's deceiving because what's happened is they haven't dropped their original leaves yet but they are putting up some new growth and you see that new growth is very different to the old growth that is original to the plant. So they look like they're being affected by the radiation exposure of the smoke detectors. So this experiment is going to have to run a little bit longer to get a proper conclusion out of it. but. It's, it is showing some stress from being around the smoke detectors. So over here are all my plant experiments. And many of these are actually control plants in this line right here. We have control plants. You'll see that my control plants actually change from this into this. They get very, very small leaf growth and the patterning goes off. You see it's quite severe on this one. It all depends where they're growing in the house as to how severe the growth cycle changes are. And this one, this one is very severe because it was actually growing very close to where I do my electromagnetic interference experiments. As you can see, it's been quite severely affected by those experiments. I also have more controls over here. And you can see that this one, while it's deformed, I mean the leaf is about half the size of what it should be, it has actually managed to look somewhat similar to the plant before it came in, but it's, a much, it's got a much reduced leaf size on it. And it's also interspersed with these very shiny small leaves. So it's obviously being affected by electromagnetic radiation. And these shiny leaves with no patterning are very classic of plant electromagnetic radiation exposure. Let me see another control back here. It's got one of its original leaves and some much smaller, less pattern growth coming up on it. So this one's a control, and this one's yet to deform. This is how it came into the house. And this is a control for just this area. I'm kind of trying to categorize this area where the, all these plants are growing right now. This is another control. As you can see, it's got large leaves, but no patterning, which is quite typical of what I see at my home. And I'm getting to the bottom of this. This appears to be coming from wireless radiation sources. So that's why the leaves are changing from this to this. So my conclusion right now is Wireless radiation is extremely toxic to this plant and it causes very strange growth patterns to appear in it. So I wanted to show you this row because this was an experiment that I ran growing lights, different artificial light sources. So this is a compact fluorescent light. So this plant has grown under a compact fluorescent light for about two weeks and it's deformed into this very small leaf growth. This particular one was grown under an LED light and again it's deformed into this very small leaf growth. 
And the one at the back is actually grown under a high pressure sodium light and it's actually furred somewhat better and the leaf size has not reduced as much as the others. But it is somewhat retarded with smaller leaves but they have retained their patterning so I thought that was quite interesting but there is some smaller leaf growth with no patterning on this plant as well. So these are all control plants right here. They've all showed the deforming. And I want to come on to this row because this is an outdoor plant that I've been growing. And I've noticed that when I grow these plants outside they also deform. And I'm trying to establish whether or not it was a wireless sensor for my weather system that was deforming this plant and I've actually taken it out of service. And I have another plant in the location growing right now to see that it's going to show this same strange growth pattern that it's changed into. And this plant's very interesting because this was grown in a typical office environment with electronic fluorescent lighting and Wi-Fi networking and it's, it's a very unique growth which I haven't seen in any of my other plants. So there's something about the environment that this grew in that has changed this growth into a somewhat miniature version of the original plant and the thing you'll notice is it's very dark green with very little patterning down the middle and it's been growing quite happily at my home in this pattern. So once these plants actually deform into the electromagnetic changed growth patterns they appear to stay in that new deformed growth even when you remove the electromagnetic radiation. That brings us on to this plant. I mean, people will actually recognize this plant. People have been following my videos as the one that I grew with foil shielding. The interesting thing was, was when I took the foil shielding off, it died. So this grew for several months in foil shielding, happily, no problems. And within weeks of taking that foil shielding off, it died, and I assume it died from radiation sickness. So that's what happens if you get into a very, very low radiation state and then suddenly expose the plant to a very high man-made radiation environment. It actually kills it. So that was uh, an interesting finding. So that's where I'm up to with the plant experiments right now. So all this appears to be right now pointing towards wireless communications being extensively toxic and also electromagnetic fields that are emitted from various electrical and electronic products changing the growth cycles on these plants into something quite abnormal. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I wish you the very best of health. Thank you.